This video is actually sponsored by Blue Apron, which is fitting because today we're going to play with our food. I was going to do some stabilizing today, but one of the major issues that I've had every time I pull out the stabilizing chamber is whatever I put in there floats. I come up with what I think is a solution to fix that. I think that'll serve our purpose very well. Last time we played with the stabilizing chamber, I think we were stabilizing bread. So, what have we got today? Corn cobs. After we finish consuming this, uh, we put out the six cobs and let them dry in the sun for, I don't know, a day or so. And they're very light now, 37 grams. That'll give us a good idea of how much weight we add and then we pour in the stabilizing resin. Now we're going to use our, test out our weight here. Oh yeah, it's a little cattywampus, but it's not the end of the world. As long as they're underneath the level here of the resin, and they are, all we need to do is put the lid on and turn on the vacuum. And you'll see this dial here. We'll start to draw a vacuum, and we are loaded with bubbles, which is a good thing. All those bubbles are air in the corn cobs. It's being pulled out of the corn and vacuumed out of the chamber. This process will probably take a good four hours or so. So while that bubbles away, let me talk to you about Blue Apron. Check the link in the description box below. The first 50 people to sign up will get $50 off your first two weeks with Blue Apron. They offer two types of plans, the two-person plan and the family plan. They deliver all farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportion. No trips to the grocery store, no waste from unused ingredients. Blue Apron allows you to create delicious, convenient, chef-designed recipes at home. In addition, Blue Apron has partnered with 20th Century Fox to bring three burger recipes from Bob's Burger to its menus beginning this summer. The recipes, which will be available on Blue Apron's two-person and family plan offerings include the week of August 20th, the Gouda Wife Burger with cucumber radish salsa and roasted sweet potatoes, and the week of September 17th, the Absentee Shallot Burger with caramelized shallots and Fontina cheese fries. There's no commitment with Blue Apron. You can skip or cancel at any time, and prices start as low as $7.49 per serving. It is about 10 o'clock at night here. This has been going for around seven hours. So while getting the air out of the corn cobs is interesting, this next step is what actually does most of the work. And that is when we release the vacuum, all of those voids that we've created are going to want to suck up air, but instead are going to suck up this resin. Wasn't that exciting? And now what we want to do is we want to leave this in here for around 12 to 14 hours. So I'm going to go to bed. Well, you just keep watching. You don't have to wait as long as I do. I think it looks pretty good. The fact that they're not floating like they were before means that they've definitely taken on some more density. All the corn cobs have sucked up the resin, but what we need to do in order to cure the resin is to heat it. Some of it will leak out during the process, and so it's a good idea to wrap them up in aluminum foil. And all we have to do is leave them in the toaster oven for about 40 minutes, and they should be good to go. All right, so it cooked for about 40 minutes, and then I let it cool for another hour or so. We should have resin-infused corn cobs. Best way to tell if this process worked is to just weigh them again. 92. All right, so it's more than doubled in weight. Seems like everything worked the way it's supposed to. There's a couple that are super straight. They'll be good for turning. There's a couple of these that are really 
curved and it's going to make turning a single object out of it difficult. These are the best. I think they'll be the best for turning on the lathe. But these three are a little wonky. They're kind of thin on one end. They're sort of curved. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to have a little fun and do some experimenting. What we're going to do is stabilize these for a second run, but we're going to use dye in the stabilizing resin. And I picked up these acid dyes. It's pigment that you're supposed to use with like citric acid or vinegar or something. It's just pigment powders. Oh, it's a nice dark color. That was black. Okay, that's black. This is turquoise. And then the last one is called Fire Red. My hope was that the corn would sink, but it looks like it's floating. Well, if that's any indication of what it's going to look like, that's pretty cool already. I cut three of them in half, and I thought we'd try to infuse some dye. It's so I've pretty. Got black, red, and turquoise. I like it. I like the red. Yeah. I think the black's going to be striking. Yeah, it could be, definitely. Yeah. I like it. The blue is breaching, but oh, I don't, think, I don't yeah. think it matters. I mean, they've already been stabilized. So that tip just won't be as dark. Uh, it definitely looks like the dye I took, at least on the outside. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that wild looking? That's really pretty. I'm dripping dye all over the ground. What do you need to do? I don't think it matters. There's so much other garbage on the ground. <laughs> And we'll let that bake for 45 minutes. Looks like the dye worked. I don't know how deep it goes. We won't know that till we start turning. I cut a, two pieces of quarter inch round steel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue those into a couple of these blanks. about 30 minutes. I don't think it's going to take much to get us a shape that we want. I just want to get rid of some of the fuzzy bits. Pretty cool looking. Just a, a light little sanding. Corn cob scratch owls. What's a scratch owl? It's basically just a pointy piece of metal. I use it for starting holes, making marks. Really, it's less about the tool and more about the material, which was corn cob in this case. I have to say the process of double stabilizing and dyeing worked out far better than I expected it to. The lacquer finish on here is great. It's very durable. I've got two coats on. I'm going to put on another one. I'm sure there are those of you who are wondering, could you also put epoxy over the top of this and make it super smooth? And yeah, you could totally do that. And we have plenty of corn cobs left for future projects. So if you have an idea for how we can use these in the future, leave a comment down below. I'd love suggestions. Right now, all I'm thinking of is pen and handles. So there's gotta be something else we can do with them. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. <laughs>